Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Moltar, and today is Saytel Day. We didn't see yesterday. I had some family stuff going on. Had to get some take- things taken care of. But we're back! Saytel 2020 Diamond League. 36 Stormo taking on Golden Crown. And I think he did. He did. Alpha Whiskey just sent me the supercut, so it's going to download here real quick. Let me go to studio mode and get this ready to go. But how's everybody's weekend been? It is Sunday, 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 right before the week is about to get a whole lot worse. You get one day because I believe the week starts on Sunday. You heathens out there that don't think that, I don't know what's wrong with you. But I believe the week starts on Sunday. And after Sunday, it just goes downhill. It's just a terrible week after Sunday. Just awful. Awful. I mean, whoever invented the work week? They just shouldn't have. Shouldn't do anything. Nothing. Just sit and watch Satel all day. Every day. Because that's how things should be. But I'm going to send you guys the supercut. And when we get back, it is going to be Golden Crown taking on 36 Stormo. Sochi against Krasnodar Center. We got all kinds of aircraft coming your way. Lots of telephone poles. We even have a J-11 today. We don't see them very often. But lots of stuff. Big rounds coming to the end, getting close to SATAC, which is going to be the end of March. But enjoy the Super Cut. I haven't seen it, so I'll be enjoying it with you. We'll be back in just a moment. When we do, we will be taken to the skies. Again, Golden Crown against 36 Stormo. Are we ready? Saytel getting ready to take off. These guys will be taken to the air here in just a minute, but we are here. As always, I am your host, Moltar, and we are sitting on the ground with Golden Crown. We've got three Tomcats for them and two Hornets and a 16. So we've got Fairy, Rhino, and Griffin and Tomcats. And then we got Fuji and who is that? I can't tell who it is. Who is it? Who is it? Who's up there? He's too far away for me to get a name. Fuji and Dave in 18 so then we got gunslinger in the lone 16 and then flipping over to 36 we've got mav and ghost in 18s dirty and witcher along with drigo in 16s and then airwolf in the singleton j11 so lots of different aircraft today we very very rarely get to see j11s anymore Lots of Tomcats, well, at least three. So Golden Crown has the long pokey sticks. They got the telephone poles. They can reach reach out and poke you in, in, in the butt. 36 has nothing of that sort. They're limited to 120 Charlie's. This is an A weapon restriction, if I remember correctly. So that will be happening. And I actually think one of these guys, at least one of them, I think... Yes, yes. Okay, so Grippen, if you look down underneath his aircraft, has a couple tiled. So Grippen is rocking four Mark 60s, two AIM 9s, no AIM 7s, and two tiled. And I think Rhino 
If we look over at his aircraft, over yonder, over here, he looks like he is doing the same thing. Yes. So, ry Rhino. Where's that alley cat? No. Yeah, Rhino is actually doing the same thing. And then back there, alley cat, one, two, three, four. Okay, alley cat is a backup in case somebody disconnects. I was like, why is she back there? But she's a, she's a backup. So that's why, that's why she's back there. Anyway, how do you guys think this match is going to go? I'm not entirely sure. We've seen the Tomcats do some dirty work. We've seen some Tomcats do, do some things. Why Tals and Saytel? They may think it works. I don't know. Do you not think it's going to work? I mean, if you can get the opposition to waste missiles, especially an opposition that takes aircraft that can carry less missiles, I mean, 36 is carrying or is taking three 16s. They have six missiles apiece, whereas every aircraft except one that GC is taking can carry at least eight. So if you can get them to waste missiles or munitions, it's it, to me it's a valuable, it's a viable tactic. That's a dumb song. So these guys are departing. 36 is taken to the skies. I got a request to not shut up during the ingress, so I'm going to try and run the camera while talking. I'm probably going to royally screw up this whole thing. We are going to get rid of my face. Well, that is not the right, that's not the right one. We're going to get rid of my face just because nobody, I think, wants to, wants to look at Moltar's head while he's, while we're doing that. He likes the face. Well, you and my wife are probably the only ones, and she really only likes it with a bag over my face. I just recently found this channel. You're the best, just saying. I try. You guys just get to ride along with me with my perpetual state of failure. So, you know, if that's something you like, then all the power to you. Looks like Golden Crown's getting ready to finish taking off. They got three guys in the air so far. Grippen, well, all of the Tomcats still haven't taken off. So we've got Grippen, Rhino, and... Ferry back here, still yet to take off for Golden Crown. And I think, no, not everybody has departed. No, that's Golden Crown. Has everybody departed for 36th? Uh, it looks like it. Yes. Everybody has departed for 36th, so they are all in the, in the air. And then we've just got Golden Crown. Looks like they're finishing taking off. At least the two 14s, Griffin and Rhino, are finishing up. And Ferry is taking off. Make sure you guys are awake. sure you guys are awake do the 14s have human rios yes in diamond league human rios are required they are forced in diamond league gold league you can use jester diamond league you have to have a human rio that's just that's just how it works so these guys all the tomcats have human rios not sure what's going to happen next year i think we're going to do the same thing but we're going to change how the leagues work next year um, so that's, that's going to be a thing. How do I, how do I foresee this match going? So we've got Krasnodar Center taking on Sochi. Mountainous terrain. GC has Tomcats. 36 does not. If 36, I think, is able to deal with the Phoenix, I think 36 has a really strong chance of coming out with a W in today's matchup. Um, I think they're a little more veterany to competitive Seital, and I think their aircraft are more pertinent and conducive to 
close in combat, which is typically where Saitel engagements get later in later into rounds. So if they're able to get away and dump those Phoenix, I think 36 is a strong chance of coming out with the W. On the opposite side of that coin, though, GC, if they can make their Tomcats work, if the Tomcats can work today, GC is gonna, gonna clap those cheeks all, all up in 36 face, okay? It's just gonna happen. 36 is gonna get bent over, and that's gonna be it. That's it. That's it. Moltar, is that his name? Is the Joe Rogan of DCS? Is that a compliment? I hope. I think GC is relying too much on the Killer Cat. I hope it works. We'll have to see. I mean, they got three Tomcats. So it's either going to work or it's going to blow up in their face. That's, that's it. It's a compliment. All right. I mean, Joe Rogan's famous, so I'll take it. I'll take it. What did everybody do this week? And I want to know while we're going through this ingress. And it's not going to be very long because these guys, uh, it's not as far as people think. How far away are these guys from each other? 34 nautical miles already. So what did everybody do this weekend? Just saw a tank come off from Witcher. I saw it. I saw it! Where'd it go? It's gone. I saw it come off and then it disappeared. Need some attack music. Change this up. So center line came off from Witcher. Next says, didn't do much. Studied, played games. Sounds like you're in college. Some chaff coming off from somebody. I think that was from Witcher. Not sure that was that was intentional. F-16 is beautiful. It is a pretty plane. Nothing can hold a candle to the F-22, though. F-22 is both pretty and kick your assness. It's got both. Gorgeous, and I will screw you up. Amram out from Gunslinger. Multiple Amrams out for Ghost and Mav. Those are long shots. Long, long shots coming from everybody involved. I don't know that those are going to be any sort of factor, but we do have a Mark 60. Mark 60 is burning. She is headed out, and that came from the back line. Back line, back line, back here. I think that was from Ferry. And that looks like it's headed towards either Ghost or Mav. Not sure which one it's going to be on, but it's going towards somebody. God, that was a terrible, terrible set of commentary. Not sure who it's on, but it's going after someone. Jesus Christ, Moltar, what is wrong with you? That's terrible. These are go away, please shots. Yeah, that, that's definitely what it seems like. I don't. It's not necessarily go away, but I think it's more of we're going to try and get you down from your optimum altitude shot, not turn away shot. We want you just to descend kind of shot. Not quite a Madden line, but close. Dude, Madden, I don't know how the man stayed employed. I love Madden, but I don't know how... Those lines ended up working out. I mean, maybe he was perpetuating to the common man, but I don't know. Moltar, if you knew who it was going to, you would be a prophet. Well, I could be a prophet because I have tack view and I can see ahead. You know, I could take notes and act like a prophet. First Tald is out here down from the south. Looks like that one came off from Fuji, but nothing really, really happening today. Nobody getting aggressive. We got Gripping diving for the deck. Make sure you're awake again. Shabunga. Mm. Nobody being hugely aggressive. No! There we go. There we go. All right, so 
Witcher getting it a bit deep. Look at Gunslinger. Gunslinger's like, kumbaya, mother trucker. I'm going to get in here deep, try and make something happen. He doesn't make anything happen, but now he's got Witcher all over his exposed behind, and he is dragging him. How far away is he? I can't tell. How far away? Missile, get out of the way. Nine miles. Gunslinger, Mach 1.1. He should be okay. Witcher breaks off. Breaks off the chase. Smart move in my eyes by Witcher. And now everyone, everyone from 36 is cold. Everyone from 36 is cold. Drigo is thinking about recommitting. We've got hot contacts from GC's Grippen and Fuji. Ferry and Rhino. Look how far back Ferry and Rhino is. What is this? Why? Why are you back this far? You're so far out of the fight. Drigo putting a 120 now. Reminder, this is a weapon restriction. So this is a Charlie variant. We do have Mark 60s. 120 out from Drigo onto Grippen. Grippen is running away. Here is Grippen trying to get the hell out of Dodge. And he has used both of his, both of his towels already. But, you know, Taud probably better than AIM-7, so I can't fault him. Can't fault him at all. Now we've got Ghost putting a missile out onto Gunslinger. I think that's on Gunslinger. So 120 out from Ghost onto Gunslinger. Gunslinger just cruising. Gunslinger is just cruising. Now defending Chaff is out. Missile inside four miles. Gunslinger needs to descend, and he gets taken down. Gunslinger, gone. First casualty, didn't defend early enough, and he is dismissed. He was trying to walk the hallways without the hall pass, and gym teacher came out from around the corner and body slammed his ass into the hard tile floor. Gunslinger is gone. And guys, I want to say that the gym teacher at this school, he's got some serious mental problems, so, you know, he just likes to beat the shit out of kids. We just got to say it. It, it just happens. This happens. Let's back up. Take a look at the tack feed. What the hell happened there? Gunslinger. Smashed in the face. And this is the missile I actually saw come off. Uh, no. I saw them. I was seeing the missile in Gunslinger's view from Mav. That was the one that was four miles away. I didn't see the one from Ghost. And that one, Gunslinger just didn't defend early enough. And it smashes him right in the schnoz and he gets taken down he is gone so great shot from ghost how far away was he that has no business hitting you gunslinger four thousand feet no way should that be hitting you absolutely not should the fence post be smashing you in the face from 11 miles you're at mach 1.1 for god's sake get away from that you better be making changes and the coming round or two, if we make it to three rounds. You better make changes, because I don't want to see this again from you, Gunslinger. So six pilots remaining for 36. Again, it's Ghost, Mav, Airwolf, Drigger, Witcher, and Dirty. And then we've got five remaining for GC, Fuji, Rhino, Fairy, Grippen, and Dave. They are really spread out. Fuji is... I'm worried about Fuji. Fuji may be going into a dark alley and getting ganged up on. He's turned around, but he may... I'm worried. Fuji, you better better fix it. Better fix it. Who am I looking at next? Who do I want to look at? I don't know. Okay, here we go. Continuing again, 36 up, 6 pilots, GC down to 5. Here we go. So we got Airwolf in the J-11. What does he have on his aircraft? So he's got... Two 77s, two ETs, and two ERs. And I just saw Grippen, out of the corner of my eye, put a missile out, and it went into the ground. Grippen, better shots. Make them count. I blame that on your Rio. He's got the big red button, the launching button. And he pushed it, and it went right in. It found the Ninja Squirrel, hit him in the face, and that guy's dead. But you're not out to kill Ninja Squirrels. We are here take down the opposition. If you're wasting your weapons on ninja squirrels, it's not going to work. Fuji continues to get in here deep. He continues to try and be the one-man army. Where is he? There he is. 
So Fuji trying to make things happen. He's got a missile coming. It gets line inside. So Fuji's getting in deep, but he's utilizing the terrain to great effect. So I can't fault him there. By the way, guys, camera three. It looks like butt because all the serv the settings are turned down because I want the camera one and two to work well, right? So we got camera one and two, Grippen and Airwolf. Aim 54 out from Grippen going up, up, and away. There she goes. Where's Grippen? Here's Grippen's Aim 54. Is it going to find its intended target? Had a little bit of an aneurysm. See somebody out there in the distance launching a missile. But Mark 60 on its way. Looks like it's coming in onto Airwolf. Airwolf may be getting caught with his pants down. He's a little bit high. Airwolf, no! You've turned right into the missile and it's gonna glide bomb right in your into your exposed behind and Airwolf is taken down. Airwolf, what was that? What was that? Why? Why? Why did he do that? Airwolf gets taken down. Backing up, looking at the tag view again at what happened. So Grippen fires from way back here onto a cold contact. It's actually not that far away. It is 11 miles. So that's a really good shot. Great shot onto Airwolf. Getting in closer, launching onto Airwolf. And Airwolf goes into this bank turn. And this is his downfall. When you bank turn like this, you lose all ability to see any incoming threats in your RWR. So when he rolls out of this, that missile is already in his face. Bam, gone. So if you're going to roll like this and bank turn back into a possible threat, you have to roll out mid-turn. You have to. If you don't, you don't allow yourself to see anything around you. You roll out mid-turn to give your RWR a view of what's around you so that you can act accordingly. If you don't do that, you're going to be an airwolf and you are going to be dead. See, this is going to be you. You're going to be without wings and dead. And that's not where you want to be because you're dead, right? Dead is bad. But rolling out, very important. Very, very important. We don't want to see that. So here we go. Continuing. Drigo coming up from low altitude. He's still got two tanks on. He's only got three missiles left. That's interesting. He's launched a bunch. Bunch of stuff already. Launched a bunch of stuff already. Drigo now putting 120 out. Who's that on? Who in God's name is that on? I can't tell, but the more pressing issue is actually Drigo coming in onto Fuji. So we're gonna go into split screen and watch this one take place. And we've got Fuji trying to defend against Drigo. Drigo gets taken down. Fuji needs to do something, or Drigo's missile is going to take him unlubricated up the behind, and Fuji gets hit. So that's a trade. They are both gone, and they both waited too long to defend, and they both get taken out of the match. So that's the first trade of today's matchup. Don't think that one's worth, worth going back and looking at, but they are taken out. Great shots by both. Fuji needed to recognize that he needed to notch that in order to get away from it. Fuji was just too high. Fuji was way too high being that close to abandon. Getting shot from low to high into something like that, bad news every time. Unless you can vertical notch it. Unless you can vertical notch it. We had a merge, I think. And I need to pause this to try and get my bearings straight. All right. So this is what's going on. This is what is happening. All right, so we've got one, two, three, four contacts remaining for 36, and we have four contacts remaining for GC. Rhino, Fairy, Grippen, and Dave for Golden Crown, and then we have Witcher, Dirty, Ghost, and Mav for 36. We've got a very close 
engagement down here between Witcher and Grippen. I don't know that they actually see each other right now. So not entirely sure what's going on, going on right there. But Witcher, I think, is the man to watch. We're going to flip over to him, and we're going to stay on him for a while because he's he's in really deep, and he's got a missile coming for his face from Dave. So here we go. Missile coming for his face. Actually, the missile's going on to Dirty. Here is Dave. Everybody is low. Witcher has broken off and actually looks like he's on Grippin. Grippin is 2.4 miles ahead of Witcher. Does Witcher see him? He looks like he does. Rolling over. He's still got five missiles remaining, so he's got plenty of missiles. I would actually be shooting now to force Grippin on the defensive. Try and make him do something to get rid of these missiles to increase the closure rate. But Grippin looks to be trying to recommit into Witcher anyway, and Witcher's just waiting. He's waiting. There's the 120. Is it going to be able to track? Looks like it is. Grippin, no! Bank turn! Downfall! Grippin taken down, and Witcher removes Grippin from combat. He is gone. And now we've got Dave coming in onto Witcher. So did Witcher get in a bit too deep? And Witcher actually decided, I'm not going to run away. I'm just going to try and recommit here. I'm going to try and make something happen. And here we go. So Grippin's dead. Don't care about him. But we've got Witcher running from Dave. And if anybody knows anybody named Dave, they are scary. You don't want to run from Dave. Dave will find you. And Dave sees Witcher and is launched on Witcher. And that missile is one and a half miles away. One mile now. Half mile. I think we're going to see a face mile. And there it is. Witcher gets taken down. Great opportunity capitalized on the man named Dave. And Dave takes Witcher down and out for this fight, equalizing this matchup again at three pilots apiece. Great job by Dave. And great job by Witcher up until he died. Because he died, and that's bad. But Dave is now running from Dirty. Dirty has turned away, launched a couple AMRAMs at Dave, but Dave looks okay. Dave has two 120s and four AIM-9s left, has recognized that those 120s are out of gas and is recommitting back into the fight. Fairy, though, Fairy, what are you doing? What is Fairy doing? He's just ferrying, just hanging out. I don't know what he's doing, but Dave is trying to make things happen. Dave launches a 120. Think that's on Ghost. Here's Ghost's point of view. Ghost descending, but that missile is going to be totally and completely out of gas by the time it gets anywhere close to Ghost. Ghost launches a 120 on to someone. Looks like it's on Dave. Dave here launches another 120 before he goes into a defensive maneuver. Trying to line his sight this incoming missile. Where is it? Where is it? It does. Barely. Just blows up right next to him. And Ghost recognizes that, hey, I'm in the clear. I'm going to continue on my jump forward. And then decides not to. So I thought he was going to come down here and try and find Rhino, but he didn't. He broke off. So Dave being hugely aggressive. He's got four AIM-9s left. Interesting that he's taken single pylon AIM-9s. I guess are, are dual pylon AIM-9s that much, that detrimental to drag? Really? But Dave getting in here deep. Dave is trying to make things happen, ladies and gentlemen. He is in here. The one-man army getting ready to merge with Ghost. They are at co-altitude. There's Ghost. And Dave is broken away. Dave looks like he sees Dirty. So Dirty's on his nose six miles away. And Dave is trying to make something happen to Dirty, but is Dirty going to get Dirty all over Dave's behind? I don't know. Does Dirty recognize that somebody's chasing him? Not yet. Ghost is now rejoining with Mav, and Ferry and Rhino are just playing with themselves down here to the south. Dave is continuing to try and press onto Dirty. That is not Dirty. There's Dirty. So Dave is continuing to try and press on Dirty. Where's Dave back there? Dave is right there. So Dave is six miles behind Dirty, and Mav and Ghost are now ingressing from the north. So Dirty may be creating a pretty good... Dragon bag situation here. 
Dave better be very careful. Just past Dave. Where's Dave? There's Dave. So Dave needs to be very careful. He's now having to defend multiple missiles coming in for him. On his right side, Mav launch one. It got driven into the ground. Ghost is going to have a pretty good shot here in just a moment. Ghost back there, 3.9 miles away, right there. And Dave is dragging him. So Dave, Dave is in the crapper. Dave is in trouble. Dave is now trying to run away. Ghost is now broken off from Dave and is now pressing onto the incoming Rhino. So here is Ghost coming in onto, onto Rhino. And Rhino, I hope, doesn't fly headlong into this missile. Here's Rhino now. 120 coming for his face. Actually, it's an aim nine. Stealth aim nine. Is it going to hit him? Is it going to hit him? Yes! Rhino gets hit, but takes no damage because he's the F-14 tank. The kitty tank doesn't care. Takes the aim nine to the dome and just keeps on trucking. Let's pause this and take a look at the overall situation. So, we have Dave here to the south being engaged by Mav. Rhino in the center of it being engaged now by Dirty. He just took an aim nine to the dome. So, he could have equipment failure, but I don't know. And then you got Ferry. I, I don't know. I don't even know. What is Ferry doing? What is this? He's down here by himself, completely out of the fight. I don't know. But Mav coming in on to Dave. Dave is recommitted. I think we're going to have to ride along with Dave for this one. Carrying on. Dave flying headlong into Mav. 120 off on to Dave. And Dave gets pulverized. He is going to be down for the count. And we need to take a look at Rhino. I paused it just so we don't miss anything. There is a 120 right over that hill. You see it? You see it? You see it? It's right there. I'm going to put it on his aircraft, on his nose, so you can see it. It's there, and I think it's going to make it over the hill. Dave, or Rhino, I'm sorry. I'm sorry! And Rhino is gone after that hit. He is down for the count. It took two. But he gets taken down. Rhino is gone. And that leaves the crazed man, Ferry. Ferry, I don't know what you're doing. This is worrisome. Very worrisome. But we're going to put one camera on each person. So we got Ghost. There we go. Boom. Two remaining for 36. One remaining for Golden Crown, and what does he have? Two AIM 7s and two AIM 9s. No AIM 54, Seagull. No AIM 54s. He's coming in at 18,000 feet. Ghost is at 8,000 feet, and Dirty is at 5,000 feet. So, Ghost, I don't like this from 36. They need to be committing together. Together, together, together. But Ghost is creating 50 50 opportunities for Ferry. He puts an AIM 9 out onto Ferry. Ferry is doing nothing. He's slightly coming off kilter. That AIM-9 doesn't actually look like it's tracking. He's just doing a little jaunt, and AIM-9 is being an AIM-9. AIM-9's doing AIM-9 things. There it goes. Doesn't care. And Ghost has turned around. I like decision. Ghost's, Ghost's decision to turn around. AIM-7 now off from Ferry on to Ghost. Ghost. Players don't work on AIM-7s. You can see that AIM-7 going up, up, and away on Ghost's Ghost point of view. Ghost needs to just keep running. Don't turn back into this and allow Ferry to close. You're creating opportunities for your adversary. Just run away. The missile's not going to catch you. It's not going to happen. But Ghost here is recommitting and creating opportunities for Ferry is Ferry going to be able to capitalize on it? That is the question. So these guys are now flying right over top of one another. I don't think either of them see one another. There is AWACS in today's matchup. There we go. So Dirty, I think, sees Ferry. 
I think. But I don't know. I'm not entirely sure. They're staying low. Nobody really sees anyone. Everybody's just kind of flying around here blind. Ghost, I thought, just saw a fairy, but he doesn't see him. They're just cruising around. Everybody blind as a bat. They must see each other on AWACS, but nobody's able to capitalize on any situation. Fairy, I think, now sees dirty. No, he doesn't. Or does he? He might. I have no idea. No, he doesn't. What is happening? Okay, I think he does. So now Fairy is sandwiched. Oh, Dirty dies! What? What? No! That is terrible! So Dirty dies, and it's now a 1v1. Ghost coming in on Fairy, and Fairy on Ghost. Fairy recommitting in the ghost. That's going to be tough because Fairy's head on. But Fairy, or excuse me, Ghost has used all of his missiles. He has no aim nines left. Weapons management is not a thing, evidently. And Ghost has no pokey sticks to be able to send anything Fairy's way. He's only got his M61. And from this range, 1.2 miles, that is not going to be effective. 460 knots for Ghost, 600 knots for Fairy. Ghost, you're not going to catch the Tomcat. Lackle says Fairy should have a crap ton of fuel left. I would think so too. Given what we saw him do in this round, which was a whole lot of nothing, he should have a ton of fuel left. Ghost, just wait! Wait! Patience, my friend! But he's not, and the rounds are falling behind. He just needs to wait. Maybe he's trying to get Ferry to react or, or something. But nothing is happening. Nothing is happening at all. And Ferry's just continuing to out energy. Ghost, and Ghost is just taking some bad shots. If you just would have waited, just wait. Just wait. Oh, that's why he was doing it. Ghost is out of fuel. Ghost is out of fuel. What? Both of the 36 combatants die without Ferry shooting a shot. What? How does this even happen? Barry played the long game perfectly. I don't even think he meant to play the long game. Zune says Ferry wins by B. Well, I think he won by a meme. I don't know how that even happens. He's just cruising. Unless that was high, a highly calculated moment. I have no idea how that even happens. And Ghost Aircraft is still in the air. Pancaking. Pancaking. He's pancake. Just falling. Still going. 101 knots. Without a pilot. Well, Redemptor, he could have, but he didn't have the airspeed to be able to catch Ferry. Ferry was at something like 600 knots. He wasn't going to be able to run into run into Ferry. He didn't have the energy to be able to do it. And he didn't have the fuel to be able to get up that fast. So it definitely wasn't going to happen. But Ghost Aircraft is still in the air. And Ferry is just... I don't know what Ferry's doing. He shot at somebody. I don't know who. Navy Doc, a win is a win. It doesn't matter. Well, they certainly have the airspace Tomcat with a nice load of fuel and weapon. That is true. That is true. Now Ferry just needs to make an RTB, but I don't see that being a problem. I don't see that being a problem at all. Bavarian pilot, yes. Di this is Diamond League, and you are required to have a human reel. He's free. Free falling. Yeah, he is. 
He's gonna free fall into the ground. He's, I can't believe his plane is still in the air. It's been maintaining 101 knots this whole time. Still going. Still going. And I think this spells the end. Ghost, you're dead. So Ghost gets taken out by the fuel goblins. And that leaves Fairy. Fairy's all alone. All by himself. And we know that what that means. He controls the bubble. Will he be able to make it home? Will he be able to make it back? We're going to fast forward this because the RTB is not all that fun to watch. He's still cruising in circles. He's still got an aim nine left, so if he would have come around in that fight, could have made something happen. Could have made something happen. The reason Ferry is still alive is because of the energy state he had during that fight. Was it the best energy state to be in? Probably not. But it kept him alive and forced Ghost to run out of fuel. 600 knots, it forced Ghost to stay in burner, take the long shots. Ghost wasn't able to close and take Ferry out because Ferry was so fast. Was that what Ferry was trying to do? I don't know. It wasn't the best corner speed for the Tomcat, but it worked. Intentional or not, it got Ferry the win for Golden Crown. And as long as he's able to put it down at Sochi, which I'm assuming he has a ton of fuel left. Golden Crown's going to win round one. And there's Sochi. That's not Sochi. Was this Sochi? Or was it Godada? Whatever it was. Oh, he doesn't have to land. They just allowed him to DC. Okay, so that is the end. That is the end of that round. So we are going to go to the Supercut. It's an awesome one by Alpha Whiskey. Then the BRX back screen for a few minutes. While I get round two set up, will 36 be able to come back? That was a crazy round. That was a crazy ending. 36, you better get your shit together. Fix it. You got it there. You had the round. Weapons management and fuel management were your downfall. If 36 can fix it, I think they got it. Will they be able to do it? Round two in just a few minutes. Welcome back. We are sitting at, I think this is Sochi, down here by the coast with 36. 36 had command of that last round. What in God's green earth happened? What happened, 36 Stormo? Weapons management fuel management you shot yourselves in the foot hell you shot yourselves in the head both of your last combatants died to the ground ground still undefeated if you're gonna go out and around that is the worst possible way i feel for you but fix it fix it are we gonna see him fix it here in round two that is the question on everybody's mind. Not a great showcase from the Tomcats for Golden Crown. Excuse me. Tomcats from Golden Crown. The Talds did nothing. Great showcase from 36th. Will they get their collective asses together to be able to fix what the hell happened in round one? For their sakes, I hope so. Because that was painful. At least two kills. I think 36th, if they're able to get, get it going, is going to ramrod GC in this round. That's how I feel. It's what I feel is going to happen. I feel it in my bones. 
It's coming. But I want to know who you guys think is going to have the round. Who is the man, Golden Crown or 36, who is the man that is going to have the round? Who's going to be the round MVP? Lackle, J-11, the Chinese Su-27? Yes. And the J-11 in DCS is the only aircraft or flanker variant that can carry the R-77. So that's why people take it over the normal Su-27 because you can use the R-77. That was a lot of sevens that I just said. But hopefully you understood what I said. I hear that J-11 spooling up. F-16 and F-18 departing. Split screen. These guys are rolling. 36th on the left, GC on the right. I want to break, guys or gals. Break from what? What does that mean? Are we going to see as big of a delayed departure from Golden Crown with their Tomcats? I have to wonder. Ferry better get his gigantic kitty button gear and get into the fight. That was such a bizarre round. Such a weird round. In that the reason Ferry was able to command the end, which he didn't really, he just kind of flew around like a lost puppy, was because he was so far out of the fight for the majority of that round that he had so much fuel, he might as well have just taken off. I hope 36 uses the Tomcats better. 36 doesn't have any Tomcats. GC has the Tomcats. Get with the program, Monk. God! It's like you're not even watching. Oh, you're gambling chores on who's going to win? Uh, dangerous. My son would just complain. He'd laugh if he won and complain if he lost. This isn't fair! I have to side with the kitties, however effective they are. You guys like the Tomcat. I like the Tomcat, but let's face it. Viper is just better. I mean, look at it. Look at it. It's just better. And then, I mean, listen to it. You guys wait? About what? I have no idea what you're talking about. No idea. I really like this round because it's not, or this matchup, because the, the distances between the aircraft or the airfields aren't that far. Like we're already down to 71 miles. I really like that. Now listen to the cats. Well, they're just taking off. Okay. in this round are that if 36 is able to figure it out, get their heads out of their collective behinds, I think 36 has a huge advantage in this round, seeing how they flew in round one. GC, they got to get their Tomcats going in order to be effective. Their Tomcats were kind of worthless in round one. I think they got one kill from three Tomcats think 
That sounds right. Tank off from Drigo. There it goes! I saw it! You can see it! I caught one! It's more fun when you catch them as soon as they jettison, but... You gotta get lucky for those. I have no idea when they're gonna do that. What's up, Skittles? How are you? This is round two. That is Greg. GC is up one to nothing. Quick shout out to Monk for the gifted sub, the 100 bits. Thank you very much, brother. I gotta say, if you guys have Prime, make sure you connect it to Twitch because Amazon owns Twitch. You get a free sub. I don't care if you give it to me, just utilize it. Give it to someone, right? It's free money. Give it to somebody. All the funding that we generate here goes right back into making the stream better. It's what it does. More sponsors, more prizes what happens and I know a lot of you guys that watch participate so something to think about how have developed how developers record this midair sounds and implement it in a sim uh, I don't know I don't know how they do that a lot of the sounds that I use though are mods virtually all of the sounds in my game are modded they're not developed I mean, some of them are but most of them are from mods so shout outs to echo 19 and everybody that, is, that has contributed to my mod pack. If you guys want different sounds for your DCS, check out Moltar's mod pack. I think there's a, a link in the panels down below. I think, if not, it's on Splash, it's on DCS World Events, SplashRunGaming.com uh, slash something, but it should be on the website. I think there's a panel down below. Dave, doing Dave things, going out here by himself, trying to make things happen. Where's the good old day? Oh, past day. There's Dave. Good old Dave. Doing Dave things. I don't. Why is Dave only taking single pylon aim nines? Like, if you're gonna take extra aim nines, take dual pylons, right? Or am I missing something? Gunslinger Dave now leading the way against Ghost and Mav. Aim 54 out from Alley Cat. Alley Cat flying this round. There it goes. Aim 54 from her trailing F14. Then we've got a 120 coming from Mav. There goes Mav's 120. guys because a couple of the cameras were too far ahead so fixing them there we go one thing I wish ED would do would make it to be easier to switch between aircraft instead of just hitting F2 repeatedly. I mean, I can go back to the map and stuff, but like, give me a button to switch between all aircraft on one team and another button to switch through all aircraft on another team. 120's getting quite close to Mav. Here's Mav cruising. Not a care in the world. His name 54 somewhere behind him. It's quite a bit above him. There it is. Flying harmlessly overhead. And Mav's just cruising. Drago puts a 120 out. Taking off towards the skies. That one looks like it's going towards... I don't know. But then Griffin puts another one out. So Griffin, Oprah of missiles this round. Says, you get a missile. You get a missile. One looks to be on Griffin. Sorry, Drago, Oprah, Oprah of missiles. 
One looks to be on to Griffin, and the other one, they're both on Griffin. Never mind. Oh! They might be on the towel. Nice! So towel making some things happen. Getting her done. Dave continues to get in deep. Gunslinger behind him, trying to make things happen. So Gunslinger following along with Dave. Dave somewhere over there to his right. Dave puts a 120 out. 120 looks to be on to Ghost. Ghost now defending. Dave's incoming missile. That's not going to be a factor. Ghost put a 120 out. It's now four miles away from his aircraft onto Dave, and Dave is now full defend. AIM 54s continuing to be launched from up north. Another one looks to be coming from Alley Cat onto Drigo. No, it's not on Drigo. It's on Airwolf. So, Airwolf. My mouse. No, it's not an air, Airwolf. It is on Drigo. It flew harmlessly over. So, Drigo needs to defend this. It's somewhere. It's not on anybody. I keep thinking these missiles are on people, and they're not on anybody. They're just cruising. Not tracking, not doing anything. But here's that towel. Looks like Airwolf is... Is on it? No, Airwolf doesn't care about the Taub. Let's see what that, where that Taub's at. Here's that Taub. So Taub just be cruising. Taub got a couple missiles, but I guess they uh, figured out which one it was, and they don't care about it anymore. But look how deep Gunslinger is. Gunslinger. Is he going to be slinging? Is he going to be making things happen? He is in deep. Deep. Is he in too deep? He's now running away. Brave, brave Gunslinger. Running away. Drigo behind him. Not too, too close, but not too far away. And now Gunslinger is recommitting. We may have a head-on incursion between Drigo and Gunslinger. So Gunslinger's recommitting. Drigo is eight miles off his nose. Do, do they see each other? Drigo is doesn't look like he sees Gunslinger. He does now. He does now. There goes the 120 on to Gunslinger. Second one out. So Gunslinger is now madly defending. And these missiles are closing. One mile, half mile, Gunslinger doesn't learn from round one. And he is gone. Wings clipped, taken down. Tech for North Korea, Ninja Squirrel fodder. He is down for the count. And that's pretty self-explanatory about what happened there. He recommitted right into the face of Drigo. Drigo launched first and took him to school. Now up here to the north, we've got Witcher. Trying to get away from an incoming 120. Launched by Fuji. Fuji now dry, diving away. That missile's going to be trashed. Don't see that as being a factor. So now we have five pilots. Five pilots remaining for GC and six for 36. Aim 54 now out for Rhino up here to the north. That is coming in on to Drigo, and I need to pause this to make sure that we don't miss anything. That is not very exciting music. So AIM-54 coming in on to Drigo. Drigo is now defending. So Drigo is the one that took down Gunslinger. Is he going to be able to get away from this? Here he is defending. He's dumping tons and tons of chaff to try and get away from this, this AIM-54. I actually think he's going to line his sight. So AIM-54 is closing. Somewhere back there. He line and sided it. Tanks come off. We saw him come off. So tanks come off from Drigo. And he gets away from that and then is passed by Dirty. So Dirty carrying on where Drigo was.
carrying on where Drigo was. Sorry, guys, I was messing with the cameras. And now we have many hot contacts for 36. Count them. One, two, three, four, five for 36, which are being the only cold contact. And then we have Fuji and Gripen as the only hot contacts for Golden Crown. So can a 2v5 work? In my experience, no. No, that usually doesn't work. ET out from Airwolf. There's the ET and another missile coming out from Airwolf. J-11 flying above Ghost. Aim 54 out from Grippen's Tomcat. And that looks like it's not tracking anybody. We jump back and take a look at the TAC view. It is not tracking anybody. It made it by harmlessly. Oh, no. But Dave is now coming in onto, onto somebody. I gotta pause this. My brain is just completely and utterly fried. I don't know what I'm thinking. It's having a hard time, so we're gonna pause it and try and get a gripsy on what's going on. So right now, if we take a look at the TAC view, R-73, or I guess TAC view thinks it's a P-73, but R-73 out onto Dave. Dave is about to have a very bad time. Dave is, uh, where's that missile? Should be above him. There it is. Oh, dear. Oh, dear, oh, my. Bad times about to be had. I don't even know that Dave knows this is coming. Dave is, like, in second grade, about ready to step out of the door, and his bully is waiting on the other side to beam him in the head with something large and heavy. And Airwolf is Dave's bully. Where is Fairy? Uh, Fairy isn't flying this round. They switch pilots. So Fairy's not here. Fairy's not home. But this is the more, the more pressing matter. And I think at the same time, we need to take a look at another thing that's going on as Fuji, I think, is about to have problems over to the north. So Fuji's over here. And he may be about to have problems in the north. But the more pressing one is Dave. Dave, I think this is it. Dave, I think this is it. And there it is. Dave's wings are clipped. He is gone. Taken down. Removed from combat. He gets hit by another one just for good measure. Taken down and out. He is gone. Fuji now pressing. Over here on the west for Golden Crown. And Fuji is heavily isolated. Now coming in head on against Drigo. Head on against Drigo. So here's the split screen so you guys can see both. Drigo and Fuji head on, about to come into the merge. Nothing launches and they fly head on past each other. Now recommitting. Airwolf puts a 27 of some sort out. I don't know what Tacky's telling me, but now Dirty, Dirty's got an AIM-120 coming for him. And is he gonna line his sight it? It's behind him. So Dirty's got a 120 coming for him, or excuse me, Fuji has a 120 coming for him, and he is taken down. So 36th, 36th is demolishing Golden Crown right now. Three kills unanswered. Three kills. No reply from Golden Crown. It is six to three right now. Aircraft remaining. Let's take a look at what in God's green earth happened there. What did Fuji just do? All right, so Fuji, Fuji merges with, with Drigo. Nobody shoots. I don't know that they see each other. They just fly by each other. Okay, so they're, they're going. They're going. Drigo carries on. Smart man. Doesn't try and recommit in there. That opens the door for his wingman to shoot in unencumbered by him being in the fight. He's not here, so they don't have to worry about killing him. But Fuji just tries to make something happen. It's two hot contacts, Mav and Dirty. But that allows Dirty to close and get a 120 off. And Fuji's 120 actually doesn't track. Or Mav line of sights it or something. But Fuji, 
his missile doesn't matter. This missile is launched from five miles. That is a dangerous 120. Dangerous. You need to notch. Trust the notch, bro. But he doesn't. He tries at the very end. He's like, oh, God, I'm not going to out-energy this. I need to change my mind too late. And he gets hammered by the incoming 120 launch from Dirty. Fuji taken down, leaving three pilots. Count them, three. Alley Cat. Fu- no, Fuji's dead. Grippen. Sorry, Alley Cat, Grippen, and Rhino. I'm like, where'd the other pilot go? Alley Cat, Grippen, and Rhino remaining for Golden Crown and six. Six remaining for 36. This is the 36 I thought that was going to show up. Ghost, Mav, Airwolf, Drigo, Witcher, and Dirty. All for 36th. They are what is remaining. And now, this is the next one. I think we got two possible incur- incurrences coming. Airwolf and Rhino and Mav and Alley Cat. So let's put those on. We're going to go to Mav here. Here's Mav on one. And then we're going to go to Airwolf on two. Oh, I passed Airwolf. There's Airwolf. All right. Here we go. Split screen, go. So Mav on the left, Airwolf on the right. Mav coming in against Alley Cat. Mav puts a 120 out onto Alley Cat. We're going to ride along with that one. Here's the 120 coming in onto Alley Cat. And Airwolf is closing onto Rhino. Coming in low. Rhino, they're about co altitude. Is that an ET? There goes an ET onto Rhino. And Alley Cat not defending. Is it going to close? Slowly, slowly tries to get the tanks on it. No. Alley Cat tries to make the plane a little bit lighter and gets taken down and paused. Somebody else, I think, simultaneously got removed. Yes, so Airwolf took Rhino down on the other screen. So Airwolf took Rhino down, Mav took Alley Cat down, and that leaves, and I think actually Grippen took Ghost down. What happened to Grippen? We missed that one. What happened to Grippen? No, nothing yet. We're about to see it. So let's jump to Grippen's point of view. Grippen, banking away. Where is it? Oh, dear. You guys see what's wrong with this picture? Does anybody see it? Because I don't think Grippen sees it at all. <laughs> no, it's not that he's inverted. It's uh, there, there, There's a little something. A little something. Right next to his left pylon. And it's coming. It's coming for his face. He's about to eat it. Here we go. Half mile. Is it gonna? Is it? Is it dead? It's so close. So close and he gets away from it. What? I thought for sure Grippen was going to go down. But no. He's still alive. So Grippen's still alive. Oh, Grippen took down Ghost. What? What? We got to back up. What happened? I thought for sure he was going to die. But Ghost went down. I'm a terrible caster. Terrible caster. I'm like, oh, did you, anybody see something wrong with this picture? And I was looking at the wrong guy. Ghost flies into the ground. Boom! Or the AIM-54 hits him. You know, both will result in you being dead. Dead. He had air lube? I guess. Grippen got away from that one. I mean, th- that AIM-9, though, we couldn't tell how much energy has, has left, was just gliding. Gliding. So blame that one on me, guys. Ghost gets taken down by Grippen, and Grippen is the only one left all by himself. So he's all alone. I know that's why you guys tune in to hear my wonderful singing voice, 
but he's all alone. Is he going to be able to make something happen? I don't know. This is this is tough. This is tough. Very tough. He's in a th- one, two, three, four. He's one v five. One v five. We're gonna stay on his aircraft intact view. All right, so we're we're on his aircraft. We're gonna stay on it. Is he gonna be able to live? He's got Witcher up here to the north. He's chasing down Mav. Here we go. So Gripen headlong took down Ghost. He's the only one left. We're gonna put some other guys up here in in tri view here. There goes an AIM-54 from Griffin's aircraft. Who's that on? Where'd it go? There it is. So there goes the AIM-54. And it is going on to... I don't know. Who's this on? It's either on Dirty or Mav. It looks like it's on Mav. Mav is still running. Mav, this missile still has power. Mav! No! Don't turn back into it, Mav! No! He got taken down, hammered, gone. Pause it so we don't miss anything. ER off the rails for for Airwolf. I can't tell who that one's on, but Grippen is merged with Witcher. Effectively merged with Witcher head on. Let me grab these two. So here are the here's these two's perspective, and then we got Dirty down here too. And he can't see the enemy yet. But here we go. So Witcher merged with Gripen. Gripen tries to put an AIM-9 on him. Missile now out from Dirty. On to Gripen. Is he going to be able to get away from that one? No! So Gripen take, gets taken down by Dirty. And he is the last combatant left for Golden Crown. 36 dominates. The second round with four pilots remaining complete reversal from what happened in round one total change domination from 36 storm now they just have to rtb and we're gonna fast forward because nobody just likes watching these guys fly away but Redemption said, no, that's not Redemption. Skittle says, round three, boys. That's right, round three. We have had a bunch of round threes lately. A bunch. Who is going to take it? I mean, round three is happening regardless, but 36 has to be able to go back to Sochi in order to solidify the round win. So they're either playing for the draw here in round two or the round win. Round win would mean they're tied at one apiece. The draw would mean GC is still up one to nothing over them. Then if 36 won round three, it would go to a, uh, it would be a tie. Best best two out of three at that, at that point. They are able to put it down. They are able to put it down without any issue as Witcher is coming in here onto finals here at Sochi. Gear down, everything's down. But that is gonna be it. That is going to be it for round two. 36. Taking GC to school. Golden Crown getting thrown down. We're going to round three, baby, which is going to be coming at you here in just a minute. Right after the Super Cut and be right back screen. Don't go away because round threes are always awesome. Here we go. Enjoy the Super Cut. We will be back. Round three. Just a minute. Here we go. Round three. The all elusive, well, well, they're not really elusive anymore because they happen like all the time now in Saytel. We go to the end. It's like the past four rounds or something have gone this way. What is going on? What is happening? Things have been exciting, but we're back. Round three, 36 against Golden Crown, tied 
at one apiece, and these guys are taking off. 36 is leading the way. Airwolf and Dirty and Witcher and whoever I'm sitting with, Ghost, are all taking off here. There's somebody up there in an F-16. I can't tell who it is. Drigo and his F-16. And now we've got GC taking off. The two F-16s and the... The two F-18s and the 16 leading the way, and the 14s are going to be delayed departure for them. Will the Tomcats finally show up? Will they finally get here? What has been happening? The AIM-54 has been worthless. I mean, it, it, it did get a couple kills. Griffin did take down Mav. Griffin got hammered, or excuse me, Mav got hammered. So there was one AIM-54 kill in round one, or excuse me, in round two. There was one AIM-54 kill in round one. But when you're only getting one kill per round with an AIM-54 that you have 12 of, that is not very good odds. That means you are one for 12 or two for 24 or one twelfth of your shots are doing anything. Well, they're doing things, but are connecting, I should say. Man, well, it depends. Next, that may be true, but the AIM-54, if fired from close range, has been dominating. Inside 15 miles, it has been wrecking. High to low altitude, fired at fast speed, it has been hammering people. So I wouldn't say it's been worthless because it has done really good work. But... When fired on trailing contacts or when you're already low, it's not going to do a whole lot. It's very easy to line of sight. It's very easy to notch. So when you're slow and you're not shooting on high contacts, you know, it's just, it's rough. Hammer don't need an AIM-54 for that? I guess. We need to petition a beer maker or something to call something a drink an AIM-54 or the Phoenix or something. The AMRAM just does it better. It seems like it. But typically there are more AMRAMs, so... Yeah, it, yeah, you're right. It does just do it better. GC needs to hire Skittles to help them with the killer cats. Yeah, Skittles went off when we saw him fly at Tomcat. My question... One of the biggest questions I have is, will this man be able to get his collective act together to be able to make something happen? Gunslinger has died very early, if not the first person to die in each of the last two rounds. Can he get his crap together to make something happen in this round? Will the F-16 make its presence felt? That's what I have to wonder. I also wonder about GC using a desert camo when it's snowing. Granted, the other team can't see this skin because, you know, unless they have it. If they have it, they can. That's a possibility. Turn off your targeting computer. Feel the force. Does it actually tell him to turn off his targeting computer? I don't... Does it? I thought it just said feel it. Phoenix Brew, the official brew of Saital. Yeah, we should get, like, a coffee company to do that. That would be cool. Take off! We saw another one. Off for Gunslinger. And we don't want that view. There we go. So these guys are probably 70 miles apart. 50 miles apart. God, Moltar, you suck at estimating ranges. But they're getting closer. Will Gunslinger make something happen? And Airwolf, he made some things happen. The J-11... Did some stuff there in round one. Is he going to be able to do continue on doing things here in round three? Excuse me, he did stuff in round two. Will he be able to continue to do things here in round three? Why should a coffee company make beer? That's a good question. I think I meant that we should get a coffee brew, not a beer brew. Coffee is more applicable to more people. Granted, I don't drink both either, so it doesn't really matter to me. Coffee stout is good. Yeah, I guess if you like it. 
I tried to drink wine again last night. My wife didn't like it. She handed it to me. I was like, this is awful. I can't. I just don't like it. I don't know why. Don't really like alcohol. Not because, you know, I dislike people or anything. I just don't like the way it tastes. So I don't do that. I tried coffee. Terrible. Terrible. Lots of AIM 54s out for Golden Crown. Is that going to be a problem for their team? Because that is 25% of their AIM 54 load right there. Shooting them early. When you shoot them early, you're going to have a bad time performing when it, when it matters. If you don't have a shot to shoot, sucks to be you. She's going to be mad at you. Another AIM-54 coming from the bottom. 33% of our AIM-54s are now in the air. Only eight remain. Sorry, nine remain. Right? No, eight remain. Four Golden Crown. So still six pilots remaining as all of those AIM 54s look like they're going to be worthless. They are not going to connect. This one's at 0.9 Mach. Worthless missile. If they did anything, they did force their opponents down from altitude. So there is that. But they need to press. Be aggressive going in here in round three. Make something happen. Gunslinger trying to get low. Guess he's trying to do something here. Doesn't have a center line. He jettisoned that. Now he's cold. Make sure everybody's awake. F-16, I think it's my favorite sounding aircraft in this sim. Echo 19 did an amazing job. So good. So good. 36 now being more aggressive. They are pressing. Drigo and Airwolf leading the way. 436. We're gonna, this is round three. We're gonna make it loud. So 36 coming in, lead the way. Gunslinger back in, being aggressive. Coming in on Drigo and Airwolf. He is low, 4,000 feet. Drigo, 18,000 feet. Airwolf, how high is Airwolf? Wrong button. How high is Airwolf? Airwolf, 16,000 feet. Is he gonna get the sneak? Is he gonna get the sneak? Gunslinger's in a great position, getting in deep. 120 off from Gunslinger. 120 off from Gunslinger, and it is tracking. It is going. It is going on Airwolf. Airwolf recommitting into it. What is with people committing into missiles? Airwolf, don't do it. Bad move. Missile is gonna connect, maybe? Yes, yes. And it hits him. Airwolf, gone. First casualty, Gunslinger redeemed himself. He's done it. Dies the first time First person to die in rounds one and two, and he gets the first kill here in round three. He has come alive, baby. Is he going to be able to carry it on? Is he going to do what Skittles said was going to happen? RGC old men. Did they just need to stretch? Did they have to take it slow going into round one and two to make sure that they didn't break their back, break their neck, or pull something, you know? Were they making sounds like, oh, as they were releasing missiles off of their planes? Was that w what was coming off of their pilot? It seems that way. It seems like they're all loosened up. And when an old man gets loosened up, man, you better watch out because shit is about ready to hit the fan and Gunslinger is slinging his theoretical shit at his opponent and it is connecting. It is hitting. And it hit Airwolf in the face, and he is gone. So six pilots remaining for Golden Crown. Ferry is back. <laughs> what, 
What is Ferry doing? I just have to, like, collect myself whenever I see this. Ferry's down here just doing his thing, doing his thing, but Gunslinger making making it happen. Making it happen, and now we've got Fuji pressing on to Drigo. But let's back up and look at that tag fee. What happened? So Gunslinger gets in unabated, launches a 120, Mach 1.1 on a higher contact Airwolf. There's not much Airwolf could do. His only out in this situation would be to turn away and out energy this missile. He's above it, can't notch it. He tries at the last moment to out energy it, and it barely, <coughs> excuse me, barely reaches him. Just barely is able to reach him, and he gets taken down. So great start. Great start by Gunslinger. Now we've got an AIM-54 headed towards Drigo, so we're going to split screen this one, see if that's going to connect. Here we go. And it is not going to track. So Fuji is now carrying on. Here's Fuji on the right. Blown by. Brandon, that's not a bad idea. I can try and do that. It just complicates, complicates things. So missile now out from Fuji. It's coming in onto Drigo. Drigo, is he going to be able to get away from it two miles? He's trying to out-energy it now. Getting close. He's banking into an half mile. Drigo is going to get taken down. Missile connects. He is gone. Drigo taken out. And Golden Crown making things happen here. I'm just pausing it to try and regain my composure. So are you talking like this, Brennan? The real stuff at the bottom, is that what you're talking about? Because that's easy. I can just use this scene instead of the other one. Is that what you're talking about, though, Brennan? Do people agree that this is a better scene than this one? Is this better? Let me know, and I'll make, I'll make things happen or try to make things happen. All right, so Fuji takes down Drigo. Drigo is gone. So amazing start. Amazing start for Golden Crown. Very similar to the start that they had in round one. Or, excuse yeah, in round one. But now, Fuji, did he get too far? Is he going to be able to run away? So, Fuji is here. Is he going to be able to get away from Mav and Grippen as they ingress? As they ingress into this fight. Let's carry on. Here we go. So, Fuji is breaking away. Now, I think the one to watch is Gunslinger again. Gunslinger coming in on the right. Looks like he's got his, his sights set on Mav. Let's grab Mav's point of view. Here's Mav. So split screen here. Mav on the right, Gunslinger on the left. Gunslinger's got a pretty good track on the map. Gunslinger is at point 1.3. So if he's gonna have energy to run something somebody down, he definitely does. And Mav is making things a whole lot worse by recommitting into the face of Gunslinger. Gunslinger slings a 120 at Mav's face, and I think Mav is going to get taken down by Gunslinger, and he does. Gunslinger gets another kill. Another one for the books, ladies and gentlemen. Gunslinger making it happen. Making it happen. He's making it rain. Making it rain virtual bodies over the Vorgen, the Georgian tree canopy. So what is going on now? Well, let's back it up. Gunslinger just runs Mav's ass down. M almost Mach 1.3, and to make matters worse, Mav recommits into this fight. Bad idea. Terrible idea. Oh, Silver Phoenix says he was running from an AIM-54 by Rhino. Maybe 
Silver Phoenix may have brought up a good point. Maybe Mav was thinking, I need to notch this. But notching into the teeth of an adversary, bad idea. Where's Fairy? Oh, you know, Fairy's down here. Fairy's, Fairy's just doing fairy things. Just, just down here with Dave, holding hands. And Fairy, if you're watching this, I'm just giving you shit. I'm just giving you a hard time. Just down here by yourself. No idea. No idea. What's going on? So this is effectively a 5v6 from the start. And Gunslinger making things happen. Here we go. Continue. Game 54 out from Griffin. And that is going on to somebody up here. It's not on anybody. And now Griffin looks to be thinking about coming in on Witcher. Now he's breaking away. But w Witcher, meanwhile, is carrying on. He's just at Mach 1. Just at Mach 1. And now Griffin's recommitting. What is up with these people recommitting? They're making closures so easy. Griffin, or Witcher now, sorted onto Griffin, coming down like a falcon, like a peregrine falcon onto its prey. Witcher finds Griffin. Is he going to be able to make something connect? Witcher launches a 120 onto Griffin. 120, closing. Closer, closer. Half mile, base mile. Griffin, gone, taken down. 36 gets their first kill, and we're going to pause before we miss anything, just in case something is about ready to hit the the virtual fan here. So, what happened there? Grippen and Witcher. Grippen recommitted. No idea why. He's flying low. This is one of the downfalls of flying low. You lose the ability to get information from AWACS. And that's what I think happened here. He's low, doesn't get info from AWACS. Witcher is able to come right in here. Coming behind Griffin, he's so close that Griffin can't really do anything. He doesn't have time to do anything. He tries to get into a notch, doesn't matter. Witcher's 120 connects, and Griffin is taken out. So that leaves Dirty, Ghost, and Witcher remaining 436th, and five pilots, Ferry, Dave, Gunslinger, Rhino, and Fuji for Golden Crown. Ghost is about ready to get double teamed. Gunslinger and Rhino, they see you. They know where you're at. And they're coming for your virtual booty. Is it going to be another one in the books for Gunslinger? Let's jump to his view. Gunslinger. And Ghost. Here we go. And we're actually going to jump to Rhino because I don't know. If anything's going to happen here, and if it does, I want to make sure we have everybody here. There we go. All right. Try view. Here we go. It's a missile out from Gunslinger. Ghost puts a 120 out on a friendly Witcher. Ghost needs to do something. Ghost! No! Ghost! Dodges it. So Gunslinger is all over. All over Ghost. Ghost put a 120 out on a friendly Witcher. And now a 120 comes from Ghost. Ghost behind it and pokes him in the no-no spot. And Gunslinger has three kills. Three kills. He goes from dying, the first man to die in rounds one and two, to now having three kills in round three where, where it really matters. Gunslinger, the old man, got his stretch out, broke out the headband. And when you see an old man with a headband and maybe dual armbands, you know you about ready to get taken to Pound Town. And that's right where 36 is going, and Gunslinger is taking him there. This is a showcase, and Gunslinger is bringing it. What we got now? So we got Dirty and Witcher remaining 436. Fuji and Rhino pressing against Dirty. Witcher's kind of here in, here in no man's land. Let's grab both their perspectives. All right, so we need 
Fuji. No, Witcher and Dirty. They're dirty. Here's Witcher. Here we go. All right, so we got Dirty up here to the north. Witcher down here to the south. Fuji now coming headlong against Witcher. Witcher dies, just flies headlong into a missile, says, I don't give no shits, and takes it like a man. But unfortunately, when you take a missile, even when you're a man, you're going to die. And Rhino now all over Dirty. Dirty's trying to run away. Dirty trying to run away from Rhino, but Rhino in the kitty. Rhino has Dirty's number. And here we go. Rhino is at 740 knots and closing. 740 knots. Dirty making the mistake, turning and burning, but still turning. Aim nine, closing. Closing, closing, inside half mile. Dirty still turning, Dirty still turning, gets away from the aim nine. Now another aim nine is Rhino continue to close. Half mile now, I don't think he gets away from this one. Oh, he does! Dirty gets away from two incoming aim nines. Fourth aim nine, does this one connect? I think this one does, finally! Dirty gets taken down, takes three aim nines, and Dirty is gone. The Tomcat. Is able to pounce on the Viper. And Dirty's Viper is gone. So Rhino, able to make it happen, gets the last kill. In this round. The only kill that mattered, the last kill, and if they're able to RTB, they win this. But MVP, baby, in round three, and Gunslinger, if you're not an old man, I'm sorry, but the old man breaking out the headband, stretching it out, getting his sweat on, and annihilating 36. Just annihilating. Damn. And now they're RTB. If they make it, they win. Right now, the best that GC can hope for is a tie. But my lord, what a matchup this was. What a round. Every round was phenomenal. Just great. Everyone, Monk comes in with another gifted sub and 100 bits. Thank you very much, brother. You actually did. Yeah. And 100 bits. Thank you very much. Uh, community sub went to Kerborg. So welcome to the family. And Rhino is now over top of Sochi. Don't think they're going to have any problem making it back to base. That round wasn't very long. But damn. What an exciting happening of events this has been. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that one as much as I did. Well, I was yelling quite a bit. That was a lot of fun. Looks like Rhino's taking the end round. Everybody else looks like they're going straight in. So who is that on finals? It's going to be Gunslinger leading him in. The leader of this round still has two 120s left. He better put his gear down, though. But weapons management. GC had it in spades. Gunslinger still has two 120s on his jet. Gunslinger, you better put your gear down. Oh, you're not landing. Never mind. It's like, what are you doing? Fuji is. So Fuji's putting it down, and as soon as he puts down, that is going to be it. We will be back tomorrow. Who's tomorrow's match? Where is my cursor? Who is tomorrow's match? Tomorrow is going to be...
Toro Squadron against 64. So tomorrow, we're staying with Diamond League, Toro against 64. Toro entered the competition late, so we'll have to see how they do. 64 is supposed to be working with her. They've had a hard time against Taw, but still a very, very good team. Toro entered late. They've been having a tough time. Are they going to be able to adjust and take it to 64? I don't know. But we got another round, another matchup coming tomorrow, 1,600 Zulu. So, guys, that is going to be it for me. That brings us to the end. GC clinches it in a best of three, two to one, on the back of Gunslinger, who shows up late. But the old man stretches it out and makes it happen. Three out of the six kills for them in round three. Great job. 36's real downfall was fuel and weapon management there in round one. If they would have done a better job in round one, that could have very well gone a very different way. So my hat's off to them. That was very unfortunate, but damn. Golden Crown gets it done and makes it happen. And that brings us to the end. So until next time, which is going to be tomorrow, 1600 Zulu, Toro Squadron against 64. Stay safe in those virtual skies, ladies and gentlemen, and I will see you guys later. Have a good one.